How to accelerate your farm in Dota 2. Hello. This guide should contain all the information you'll need to be able to accelerate your farm, giving you the best chance possible to carry your team to victory. This will be more on the safe lane, but you can apply a lot of this to whatever role you're playing. Farming patterns are very important in Dota 2. Being able to move across the map, getting the most gold possible is vital as a carry. This is even more important on heroes who require items to be effective, such as anti-mage. If you can move around the map acquiring as much gold as you physically can, you will outfarm everyone without even having to kill them. You also need to consider where it is safe to farm. You can't just farm without vision if none of the opposition are showing on the map. Moreover, you can't just farm right by the enemy tower without expecting at least one rotation to stop you. You have to be smart when farming. It may seem like you're just mindlessly hitting creeps, but there's a lot more to it than that. In lane. When farming in lane, you need to know where you can position yourself where the lane equilibrium should be, and when you should start to push in the wave. I'll talk about the lane equilibrium first, as that's the first thing you should think about when starting in the lane. Most of the time, you won't want to block your wave as the safe laner, as if you do in most cases, the enemy wave will end up under your tower, making it harder for you to last hit and then causing your lane to push. If the lane equilibrium becomes unbalanced, you'll want to get your support to pull for you. As farming near the enemy tower, it'll be easy for the opposing off laner and support to run you down, forcing you out of the lane. Learn to recognize when your lane is about to push so that you can give your support an appropriately timed warning rather than telling them to pull when it's too late. Knowing where to position yourself in lane is key so that you won't end up dead. You'll need to know the capabilities of your own, your supports and the enemy's heroes. Some lanes will end up being harder than others and that's when you'll need to decide to retreat to the jungle. Other times you might want to be overly aggressive, pushing and taking the tower early on. Once you have your upgraded boots and a stout item, Wraith Band, Bracer or Null Talisman, you'll want to push in your lane, and then farm the hard camp next to it. Rotate between these two to maximise your farm and put pressure on the off lane tower. Pushing in the lanes can help take objectives and force out rotations from the enemy team, as the opposition will not want to lose towers for free. If you can force out multiple rotations, you can TP elsewhere on the map, as you now know they cannot rotate to kill you since they just went to stop your push in the safe lane. There'll be a point where you want to enter the jungle, either when the enemy team rotates to your lane to force you out and take your tower, or that you've taken the off lane tier 1 and pushed the wave into the tier 2, which can be too dangerous to constantly farm next to. This leads into the next point. The jungle. First of all, I'm going to preface this section with the fact that neutral creeps are worth significantly less than the lane creeps. Always farm the wave first if it isn't in a dangerous position. Now that's out of the way, when farming the jungle you'll need to move effectively, as you need to make it worth your time. Think about where you're going to go farm next, and how you'll get there. For example, if you start at the bottom radiant camp, you should move around the map like this, shown on screen. You want to be moving in one main direction. Try not to double back on yourself until the camps have respawned. As you can see, you start at the bottom radiant camp, move to the one near the tier 1 middle, then go to the camp in the main jungle. After that, you find the ancients, then the small camp, then the hard camp. If the wave at any point is nearby, prioritize farming that first. The neutral camps will always be there, the wave will not. You'll also need to consider how dangerous each camp or wave is to take. Look at these maps. The first map shows where it is safe to farm as the dire when all the towers are up. And the second map shows the same, but for Radiant. Green is the area that is generally safe at all times, while orange areas are riskier to take, but not totally unavailable to farm. Now imagine you're Radiant, and you've just lost your middle tier 1 tower. The map would look something like this. The two camps nearest where the middle tier 1 was becoming slightly more dangerous to take, as the tower is no longer providing vision and blocking movements of the enemy team. Now look at this map when you've lost all of your tier 1 towers as the Radiant. All of the outer camps in your jungle are now orange, showing the slight risk that is present when taking them. The dire hard camp is now extremely dangerous to farm, as it is much harder for your team to rotate to you if you end up getting ganked. How dangerous a camp is to farm isn't set, it's very much a dynamic process that changes throughout a game. But what I've shown here is generally how it goes. You need to take all of this into account when farming. If you're farming the more dangerous areas of the map, you need to be aware of whether the enemy team is showing on the map or not, so that you can assess whether you can take the camp and get out before they potentially rotate and kill you. Try to get your supports toward the jungle so that you can see potential ganks coming and get out before they can get to you. This becomes vital when you're behind, as the enemy team will be looking to invade your jungle, so warding can pre prevent you from dying and help protect your jungle. If your supports for some reason refuse to ward the jungle, do it yourself. Observers are free and sentry wards only cost 75 gold. Being able to safely farm the jungle is worth a lot more than just 75 gold. Stacking camps. 
It's important that you get your supports to stack camps when they have the opportunity. Since you can farm the neutral camps at any time, you're basically storing up potential gold for yourself to farm at any point in the game. You need to make your time in the jungle worth as much as you can, as neutrals are worth less than the lane creeps. If you can get a couple stacks in the jungle, you can easily catch up if you're behind on farm, giving you a way back into the game. Make sure that the camps that are being stacked are the safest ones on the map so they cannot be stolen by the enemy team. Kills. You can accelerate your farm even more if you can successfully get in and out of fights, acquiring kills in the process. If you're playing anti-mage for example, it usually isn't worth it to turn up to early fights as you're relatively weak. But if you can get in, find a kill, then get out and return to farming creeps, you'll be massively ahead of anyone else. You need to find the right balance for this, as if you forget caught out and die or just idle trying to decide whether you want to go in or not, you'll end up falling behind on farm. If you're looking to farm and thinking about entering a fight, don't go out of your way to rotate to it. If it's nearby, go for it, but otherwise continue to farm your lane and your section of the jungle. And that's about it. That's all the basics on how to accelerate your farm, giving you the best chance possible to win. Any feedback on this guide slash article would be really good, and I hope you will find this useful. And if you want to see anything else like this, just say in the uh, comments. And yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, good luck in your future games, and uh, I hope you find this helpful. Right, I'm out. Later, boys.